Hello everyone, and welcome to another bonus episode. I'm Gabe, and today we're going to be designing some new fairy types for the Paleon region. I asked for suggestions for three stage designs, and I got so many ridiculously good suggestions. In fact, I was so overwhelmed that they aren't all going to fit into one video. I'll be spreading the remaining designs out over a couple other bonus videos to come. There's a lot to get through, so let's go ahead and get started. There are three comments that really helped me figure out this fairy type line. First off, Pewter City Jim, uh, which by the way, he has his own Fakemon region that you should go and check out. I'll link to it below. Uh, anyway, he basically challenged me to do something akin to the Clefairy, Wigglytuff, Togepi, and Chansey lines for our fairy type. You know, start out as something that's more of an amorphous ball of cuteness. Yeah, yeah, amorphous ball of cuteness? Let's start there. Right off the bat, it's not going to be entirely without animal inspiration, as you can see in my reference images. We're going to be pulling from the oh-so-lovable, strange, horse-like abomination that is Chalicotheres. Now, of course, we're starting off as just a little round blob, so all it's going to get is the slightest little horse nose, a tuft of fluff that could be read as a mane, uh, and ears. And even then, the ears could just as easily be rabbit ears or something. I was really struggling to keep this design simple. You know, landing on something that feels as though it's the same level of complexity as the other baby Pokemon like Cluffer or Hapini is really hard. You know, there's definitely a certain level of simplicity that is allowed with those designs since they're a part of the earlier generations. So I kind of, I mean, I kind of doubt that they would be received all that well if they were released today. But even though I failed to get all the way down to their level of simplicity, I ended up being pretty happy with how this design turned out. Definitely more, you know, Clefairy than Cleffa, but still good. Especially since, you know, the second evolution will be pretty large in comparison. Honestly, the hardest part was just getting the colors right. I mean, the Pokemon color palette usually isn't too tough to figure out, you know? I just avoid super dark or super saturated colors and stuff generally looks okay, but navigating around peach and cream and white and pink and whatnot, it's just tricky for some reason. Um, but I did finally land on these appropriate colors. All right, enough rambling. Here is the start to the fairy type line. Little Helfoof, the helper Pokemon. This tiny equine Pokemon isn't particularly capable, but just loves to assist others with whatever they may need. Helfoof can be observed in the wild protecting Dodoy, but unfortunately, the bird brain Pokemon hunts Helfoof as soon as they evolve. This fairy type is often too helpful for its own good, and its ability is Cute Charm, so that means when it's hit, there's a chance that it will infatuate the attacker. The name is silly, and I like it. Uh, it's kind of making fun of me, because when I first saw the Pokemon Hoot Hoot and read its name, I read it as Hoot Hoot. Uh, so this Pokemon's name is the opposite. Instead of being said separate, like Help Hoof, you have to say it all together, like Hell Foof. Uh, it's kind of tough to say, and I like it that way. Okay, let's keep rolling along then. The next important comment came from Zach Hubert. He did an amazing job helping me narrow down my focus on what animals we could be using. That's where the Chalicotheris came from, along with some sprinkles of Entelodons and Paraceratherium uh, when we get to the end. But for now, it's all about that horse abomination. I just love how strange these things look. Uh, and we're going to be leaning into its big, goofy arms. In fact, our helpful little pony is going to evolve to just start giving everyone hugs. Um, now, I already had a Nurse Joy Pokemon in mind, which we just haven't gotten to yet in the region. But there might just have to be two Nurse Joy Pokemon, since I think this one fits in really, really well. Anyway, because it will be giving therapeutic hugs, I knew that it needed to have some, you know, soft fur on its arms and belly. The exact patterning took a little while to figure out, but I knew that it was going to be important for the theming. 
I also let the mane and tail get a little more floofy uh, and looking almost like whipped frosting. And not that this Pokemon is food related, but just that it's fun because this and its pre-evolution, their shinies look like they're made of chocolate, so it would just be like frosting on their heads. Anyway, for the non-shiny colors, I struggled again. Um, with this design in particular, I found myself fighting the My Little Pony look. I was fine giving off that vibe a little, but I didn't want it to be too overt. So we got something that's like a subtle Fluttershy coloring in the end. Anyway, here is Helfug, the hugging Pokemon. Hugs from this friendly Pokemon instantly ease stress and fatigue. The fur on their arms and bellies is one of the softest materials discovered. Helfug travel across the Paleon region attempting to aid every person and Pokemon they come across. Unfortunately, if they cannot figure out how to assist someone, they resort to just giving excruciatingly long hugs. Its ability remains Q-Charm, so chance to infatuate an attacker. Oh, and yep, it also gets a wonderfully clumsy name, not Help Hug. No, it is Helfug. Uh, yeah, I like that. I like it a lot. Uh, okay, but we're here for a three-stage evolution, aren't we? But we happen to have a split evolution here. And that's all due to our last and most influential comment from John Velez. He suggested that we do a Pokemon based on agriculture and the domestication of the natural world. So a split evolution for either controlling animals or plants. It's so good. Seriously, John, top notch suggestion. Oh, and we get to pull in inspiration from another existing Pokemon. What? Yeah, John said Psychic would make sense for animal controlling, and there's already a Psychic Pokemon all about hypnotizing and controlling others. Oh, and it just so happens that Chelicotherus is tangentially related to Tapirs, uh, just like Hypno, and the Snoot let me pull in some slight inspirations from the, you know, very mean, ancient, pig-like Intellidons. Ooh, you know, I just love it when it all comes together like that. It's just perfection. I knew that it was essentially going to be a mashup of Hellfug and Hypno, but getting all the details figured out was harder than I expected. Uh, the main suggests Hypno's little, you know, collar that he has while feeling more primal, so that's good. Oh, and I ended up putting some hip markings on it to reference the wavy pattern on drowsy oh and the tail too the tail does the little wiggle as well oh and lastly getting the intelligence tusks and cheek protrusions help you know give it just a little bit more character as well yet again the color palette kicked my butt here especially here since it has the mane and tufts on its arms as soon as i plopped any color that was remotely pink or beige, it just looked like this poor Pokemon had been partially shaved. Not a good look. I ended up having to land closer to Hypno's actual colors than I had initially hoped, but by pulling in some of the purples into the mane and the markings, it ended up looking pretty good. Oh, and not to take the easy way out, but I felt like the shiny just had to be the drowsy and Hypno colors. All right. Here is Hipzy, the domesticating Pokemon. This Pokemon still wishes to help others, but unfortunately it has decided that it knows what is best for others. Hipzy possesses immense psychic powers which allow them to mind control people and Pokemon. They are rarely malicious, but can be extremely difficult to train. Hipzy are the direct ancestors of Drowsy and Hypno. And its ability is forewarn, so that lets it know what moves a foe has. And I really like how this turned out. I think it's my favorite of the bunch. But you know what? All the inspirations, the Chelicotheres, the Paraceratherium, and all the other related megafauna, they're weird. Like, really weird. And Hipsy, you know, it's cool. It's super neat. But it's not really representing the real intense strangeness. So, for the other half of this split evolution, let's let's get weird. Uh, right off the bat, what's that on the research page? Yes, that is a watering can. Our Pokemon, based on the domestication of plants, is going to be partially modeled after a darn watering can. 
And of course, we're pulling in the Paracerotherium, along with the extinct giant Camelops also. Smushing them all together, we can get a kind of vaguely watering can silhouette. You know, I knew that I wanted to smush the face flat um, with the idea that it could use like water jet to spray water out of its nostrils and look just like a watering can head. And then the tail could easily swoop up to mimic the handle. But it wasn't until I got to the back that I started drawing a blank. You know, I brought in Camelops's, you know, cameliness to get that big hump uh, in order to help with the silhouette, but I just didn't know what to do with the hump once we had it. Eventually, I gave it a covering of twirling fur. I mean, the, the swirls were meant to bring in a more watery motif, but I also don't hate that it kind of looks like a shell, which Though completely unrelated, it's fun to kind of reference the massive extinct mega tortoises. Again, I fumbled around with the colors for a bit, but eventually we wound up with Agridrip, the water spout Pokemon. This slow moving titan has focused its goodwill on cultivating plants exclusively. Agridrip only eat fruits and seeds and will patiently water plants and wait for them to grow their food. The water they produce is able to refresh any parched vegetation in seconds. They are so attuned with the foliage around them that they have built up an immunity to grass-type attacks. And there's the ability. We're calling it Green Thumb and it is immune to grass-type attacks. It is strange, you know, but I actually kind of like how off-putting it is. Oh, and I couldn't decide uh, how this split evolution should work. I mean, what do you think should determine if your Pokemon domesticates plants or animals? If you have an idea, I would love to hear all about it down in the comments below. And there you are, all of our new Fairy-type Pokemon. There are more designs to come based on your suggestions, but unfortunately, those bonus videos are going to be pushed back a ways. I am very excited to be marrying our very own Professor Ginkgo at the beginning of November, but that also means that I need to lighten my load a bit leading up to the wedding. I'll still be doing the normal episodes on Fridays, but the bonus episodes will need to pick up after Aaron and I do that wedding thing. Alrighty, a huge thank you to everyone who left suggestions, and I'll see you all in the next episode where we will be starting a legendary side quest. See you then. Bye! <laughs>